Um, so because of time limits, I can't give you um, a long introduction into the um, history of um, the, the mass immigration of uh, German Jews in the Nazi era, and also not about the colorful press that uh, immigrated German Jews founded in uh, the 1930s and 40s. Uh, in their centers of um, immigration in the USA and China, Palestine, South America, um, and so on. And I will um, immediately um, come to um, the, come to my research question. Um, when we look at German Jewish history before and after the war, um, the, the Second World War, um, there's also there's not this not this the, the time this. Dim the dimension of time that we change, but we also um, are changing the spatial um, dimension. Well, we have a spatial, the different spatial mode, um, because um, we're looking um, of German Jewishness inside of Germany or outside of uh, Germany. Um, so German Jewishness after 19, uh, well, after 1930s already, after 1938 becomes a um, a, a category interesting, interesting uh, for migration history. And um, um, whereas in Germany, so before 1938, German Jews had to come to terms with Jewish difference in the German nation state. And after 1938, they were confronted um, with a German Jewish, with a German Jewish difference. Um, the question I want to ask today is how do German Jewish groups integrate German Jewish individuality into culturally diverse societies? Are there um, elements of transnationality um, or postmodern thought? And um, the way I want to ask uh, to answer this question today is um, actually to take you on a journey into three different countries. Um, and I want to uh, compare three different um, German Jewish newspapers um, and look at their anniversary issues in the 1940s and 50s and on articles on migration. And I will filter out norms and values about migration. And I will also give you some um, background about the structural setup of these newspapers um, thanks to a quantitative, to quantitative analysis which I conducted um, during my PhD thesis. And I would call all in all the whole thing here today um, an international comparison, although I will give you um, in the fourth part of this um, short talk uh, an internationalist reading of the material. So let me begin my comparison with the British monthly AJR information, which is the most liberal paper when it came to defending German Jewish peculiar peculiarity in the receiving societies. It was founded in 1946 um, and uh, published in the English uh, language. It was greatly influenced by former functionaries of the Zentralverein Deutscher Staatsbürger Jüdischen Glaubens. This organization, as we um, remember, had defended the Jews' rights as German citizens and emphasized the Jews belonging to the German culture. In England, uh, these functionaries and in their publication, HR Information, um, they transferred the discourse of civic emancipation on the British context, but maintained their cultural identification with German Jewishness. We can, uh, I want to illustrate this um, by the anniversary issue, which was titled Britain's New Citizens in 1952, where Hans Reichmann, a former syndicus of the Zentralverein, writes in a programmatic text, the country which gave us shelter has become our country of adoption. We are grateful and loyal British citizens. Other articles on the same anniversary issues emphasized the impossibility of becoming English. And here um, is a speaking or very uh, speaking quote by uh, Gabriele Tegid uh, um, from her text in this issue. It is not by chance that outsider is an English word in many languages. The refugees found life in England a game dominate, dominated by rigid rules. Complementary to the strict, strict vision on Britain, HIR information be thought of German Jewish collectivity. The paper was preoccupied with news on German Jews around the globe, which represented more than the half of all news content. 
Age of Information concept the German Jews as a group, which was defined by Jewish loyalty, German culture, and, an integration, and the integration experience into the receiving society. And this mixture makes every one of us part of a specific group, as can be read in, in, in an issue in 1947. How does AJR information then reconcile the refugees' confession to the British citizenship on the one side with their identification with the German Jewish heritage on the other side? I would argue um, with a pluralistic societal model which celebrates cultural diversity and allocated responsibility for social harmony also on the veteran society side. We find this philosophy in the very first issue um, where uh, no one else than Leo Beck wrote the leading article. Um, and in this leading article, he depicts um, every society as a diverse society. I quote, a community is a combination of individuals with characteristics of their own and with desires, wishes, and tendencies of their own. We may therefore say a community binds together human beings who may be animated by forces directed against the community. Um, Beck not only um, um, promoted a, pr a pluralist vision of society um, um, and, individual and celebrated individualism and variety, um, but he also said that, this, that, uh, the, that variety was, also, was actually beneficial for general social co cohesion. Um, and we can, um, and that we can see this in the next quote. Strangers may be people who themselves have one day been started out of their response. Now they disturb others and theirs. Both sides have to give an answer to the problem. The one, the answer of loyalty, and the other, that of liberality. That is the idea which this paper has served. So I would, uh, um, would, um, um, would, um, would, sorry. Uh, I, as we, you remember, I call the whole model that um, AJR information is promoting here um, a model of mutuality, because uh, Leo Beck here says that the, um, that the responsibility for social harmony must not just come from, um, from the immigrant, but also from the receiving society. Um, but all in all, it's a, and all in all, it's a pluralist model. Uh, when we look at the next um, example in my comparison, which is the Israeli um, case, uh, we will also see a pluralist model, um, but with another in another mode. And where the farmer Zentralverein opponents, the successors of the Jüdische Rundschau, who also took a stance for the recognition of cultural difference and against uniform, uniformism, namely in their weekly Mitteilungsblatt, which was published in Israel. Looking at the papers reporting on mass immigration of Holocaust survivors and Jews from North Africa and the Middle East, we can see that the editors represent German Jews in Israel as one Landsmannschaft amongst many. Landsmannschaft was regarded advantages for the immigrants' acclimatization. Mitteilungsblatt not only acknowledged the Landsmannschaft as a natural principle of social order, but also appreciated the concept as a means to guarantee social cohesion. Immigrants who negotiate their needs and the Landsmannschaft can satisfy them more efficiently. It gives them agency, raises their self-esteem and engenders a sense of civic participation. All these benefits in turn would lead to the unity of general Jewish society in Israel. This positive attitude towards Landsmannschaft was not just an indirectly formulated critique against the Israeli absorption regime's unnecessary cultural pressure on the immigrants from uh, North Africa and so on. With this liberal attitude towards cultural diversity in Israel, the paper acted against the mainstream Zionist imperative of Mizu Galuyot, which um, proclamated an Hebrew, an Hebrewization, uh, which should, become, which should uh, happen as a revolution as fast as, as fast as possible. Of course, Mitteilungsblatt was also a Zionist paper, so it welcomed the influx of new people as a strengthening of the nation, not only politically, but also economically, as we can read in a 1940 article by the social worker uh, Margarete tchonovsky pinner who was the kind of um, expert on uh, immigrant uh, absorption 
in Israel and was writing almost in every issue an article on immigrant uh, topics. Um, she also visited Maa Varot and um, uh, spoke about the, the critical conditions over there um, already uh, when the Hebrew newspapers were not, um, when Hebrew newspapers weren't talking about this topic. Um, um, yeah. So Mitteilungsband also expected the merger of Jews from all over the world to a united Jewish nation. But there were not, but Mitteilungsband was not afraid of cultural pluralism, pluralism as a programmatic text on immigration absorption by Margarete tonowski pinner shows. And here I quote, a different question is the one regarding the cultural influence of the great Aliyah. She brings disturbances, but history teaches that times of such great upheaval also mark the birth of intellectual creations. Mitteilungsblatt not only differed from the Zionist mainstream when it came, uh, when it celebrated the individuality of Landsmannschaften over the Hebrew collective, but also when it argued consciously for an integration of certain traits of diaspora culture into the new Jewish society. Here it acted against the Zionist mainstream imperative of Shlilata Galut. Um, and here uh, I quote from Tonowski Pinner's programmatic article another time. For us, the getting together of people from different parts of the world, this gathering of knowledge, race of life is a value in itself. Those who look with tolerance will recognize the advantages and disadvantages of each immigrating Landsmannschaft. So what are the advantages that German Jewry can bring to Israel and to the reconstruction of the Jewish nation? They saw their advantage in their democratic culture, in their economic creativity, and in their Western education. Tonowski Pinner is not talking about this topic in, in her article, um, but the, we can uh, filter out uh, this message um, from the setup of the, the general setup of this paper. Um, um, but um, Although uh, they were Eurocentric because they were came from the middle from Middle Europe, um, they thought that every Jew, Jewish Landsmannschaft would uh, add their advantages to the new Jewish um, um, to the Jewish state, and uh, that the process of which um, characteristics and which advantages should be um, uh, become um, common Israeli culture. Uh, was um, the should be the result of a democratic process. So here we also have a pluralist um, uh, model, but uh, the 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 um, but the aim of this um, um, of the the aim was and finally a merger um, of these different plural peculi individualities. Let me continue with week, with a weekly Aufbau uh, in America, which is the most famous of the three papers presented here. The paper, which is known for its cosmopolitanism in, uh, in the German Jewish historiography, um, proclaimed nothing less more than classic, classical assimilation. And I found this a little bit uh, surprising, um, but we will see why. Um, this rather traditional approach, assimilation to migrant absorption, is reflected, reflected in a programmatic article titled Alignment or Isolation by one of the editors. Wilfried Hulse writes about the integration of German Jews in an article uh, with the title Alignment or Isolation. Um, so, certainly, this is a long process, which first and foremost requires goodwill to be honestly ready to preserve only the real worthy and without hesitation to cast off a lot of those things that are not necessarily of importance. A certain willingness to sacrifice this on both sides, first of all, however, on the side of the integrating minority is imperative. We have to bear in mind that Aufbau's imperative of Americanization is embedded in a representation of an American melting pot nation that welcomes Jewishness. This positive view on America is reflected in the general setup of the paper. In comparison with AJR information, reporting on, on non-Jewish American society is five times more positive than AJR's um, reporting on a non-Jewish British society. Um, to give you an, an impression of how the paper promoted the American narrative of from rags to riches, uh, let me quote um, headlines from the 1940 and 1950 um, anniversary issues 
stories um, they said the hands and succeeded or stories of work and success Europeans who made their way in America German Jewish immigrant wins fencing championship for USA um, these headlines acknowledge the refugees agency in the process of, process of integrating in the new country uh, as positive in the new country. As positive as these headlines may sound, they imply that the mammoth task of fitting had to come from the newcomers themselves. And this is uh, in line with um, the, the pro programmatic article of Hulse. Certainly, Aufbau also offered news content in which the German Jewish individual was conceptual conceptualized in a broader German Jewish collective. And this brings me to a fourth way of conceptualizing German Jewish present and future outside of Germany the German Jewish diaspora. The idea of German Jews as an internationally connected group is implied especially in Aufbau's advertising strategies. Let me here quote some ad slogans from the 1950s, which um, present Aufbau as a connector of German Jews who want to overcome geographical space. Aufbau connects you with all your friends on all five continents. Aufbau is the ideal Hanukkah present for your loved ones at home and abroad. A reader in India with the help of Aufbau found a friend in Australia who knew the address of a relative in North Africa. So at least in Aufbau's advertising section, a postmodern transnational German Jewish diaspora becomes imaginable. But now let us look at AJR formation again, uh, where this diasporic existence of German Jews is not just formulated as a status quo, but as an imperative. I quote Leo Beck from the year 1950, from this heritage can be deducted as a task for Jews from Germany in the future. The individual has to become aware of its connection to its historically begotten community. As the Spanish Jews understood their heritage as today Spanish communities still exist, also the individuality of German Jewry has to be preserved for the future for its own sake. In my view, it's also striking that Leo Beck stresses the German Jewish experience as a collective one, whereas Aufbau related to its readers first and foremost as individual consumers. Calling upon the German Jewish reader as an internationally connected one in Aufbau was, in my view, a marketing strategy to open up a global market and didn't belong to the politics of, um, of um, Aufbau. I come to the end. I, um, I know I'm a little bit over the time. Um, so to sum up, because this is a comparison, so I also have to come to a conclusion. In German Jewish history, we tend to look for the typical and the common characteristics of the groups of people we are interested in. Opting for a transnational approach on post-war German Jewish existence, one has to bear in mind the even greater risk of homogenizing German Jewish history. Transnational historiog historiography concentrates on common characteristics independent from space and cultural context. As we have seen, a methodological transnationalism in post-war German Jewish history is partly justified. All newspapers found pluralist answers to their new status as migrants in diverse societies, and all of them depict German Jews as, as a community of, of solidarity. We can also find the idea of a German Jewish collective beyond national borders in all the papers. On the other hand, a rather old school comparison, which I offered here along international lines has shown that German Jewry was not uniform. German Jewish newspaper people in Israel, USA and Britain have used different ways of representing the German Jewish role in culturally mixed societies. While AJR information and Mitteilungsblatt stand both in opposition to the dominant absorption regimes in their time, only AJR information questions the meta narrative nation. The, and um, finally, I would say that, um, and this is uh, also my view an, an interesting finding, um, that the paper's um, difference, differences um, are not just due to a, a, a different ideological background of the editors and uh, the, the different absorption regimes, um, but also um, because of the different uh, financing models of the papers and uh, their dependence or independence uh, of subscriptions and advertisings. Thank you.